There we go. We are live on Facebook. Let me just double check everything. Exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, it looks good. People are coming into our room. We are live. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. hello to Australia. This is the, this is the earliest uh, scuba Sunday we've ever done, time-wise, because uh, obviously time zones are... <laughs> What time is it for you? For me now, it's 7.30 a.m. Absolutely. Um, I'm in South Africa and same time as, as Germany, Central European time, but it's fine. Yeah. Happy That's Mother's fine. Day, everyone. Yeah, happy Mother's <laughs> Day. <laughs> okay, wonderful. We already have 28 people watching. That's nice. Okay, everyone. Yeah, so we're going to have like, we're just going to wait two or three minutes. So a few people can come into the room because some people will get a notification if they watch the SSI space a lot, they get a notification. Um, and for anybody else that's not watching right now, anybody can still go back on our Facebook page at any point to, to watch it again. It will stay there as a video. So you can watch it, you can scroll through it if you want to see a certain point again, which is, which is fairly nice. It's really cool. That's nice. Okay, so what I will do is I will also start sharing my screen because we prepared a little bit of a presentation because what is a what is a destination destination special sorry without a few nice pictures. Um, so yeah we'll we'll show a few pictures from everyone different places obviously we'll not be able to cover the whole of Australia, we have three very popular areas here, but Australia is very big. <laughs> it's like all of Europe. Yeah. If, so, so how are you guys doing? Um, how's, how's the situation been for you? Let me know a little bit. Are you guys busy? Are you working a lot? Do you have a lot of customers? At the moment? Mm -hmm. from situation you know travel is still not open for Australia I know yeah well I can only, I can only speak for Byron um but it's we'll have certain weekends we'll get quite busy <clears throat> sort of over Easter or Anzac uh but during the week weeks sort of weekdays it's definitely tapering off right now can get a bit more quiet but it's, the conditions are beautiful we just don't have that many travelers yeah how about you Leila yeah, so here on the Sunshine Coast, um, we're pretty lucky to be exploring our backyard and coming into winter, the conditions are getting beautiful and we're all very excited for um, some marine life like the green earth sharks to come around and visit us. Um, but yeah, like everyone, we haven't been able to travel, but a lot of our locals and um, regular divers have been supporting us and supporting Sunshine Coast and exploring so it's been good we've been busy and yeah happy that's nice that's great how about you bob we've been very busy we're located just midway between sydney and newcastle so you've got the largest population of people in new south wales and our mm. own door and it's been great i mean uh, they can't travel too far they can't travel over the borders um for a while so they were really hammering the the local areas anywhere from where we are on the central coast, up further mid north coast, now we're even journeying down to Jarvis Bay. So, yeah, I think New South Wales has actually fared quite well. The only concern we had, I think you saw in the news there, we had those major floods. They kept us out for a few weeks. And, uh, but yeah, now we've just had a, a local weekend where we can't die because of the bad weather. But it's still, still been good. People have still been getting out. I mean, uh, we don't count our visibility in hundreds of meters. Sometimes we actually count it in hundreds of centimeters. <laughs> yeah that's i mean but that's fine you know uh, it's it's also good it's very important to learn to dive in low visibility as well teaches oh, you a lot for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i would say let's dive straight into it um hello everyone welcome to our destination special about australia Today we have three guests here from Australia. We have Bob Diaz from ProDive. Then we have um, Claudia from, from Byron Bay Dive Center. And we have Leila from Scuba World. 
Um, we have spread it out over a few different destinations diving in Australia. For everyone that is watching right now, uh, thanks for watching. If you have to drop out for any reason, that's no problem. The video will be live and it will be there for the rest of time. Uh, it will stay there in our videos uh, within the SSI page. So you can come back to refer to it at any point. Uh, you are more than welcome to ask questions in the comments. I will be overviewing the comments. So if there's any questions coming in, um, we will, I will be handing them off to our guys here. And if there's any questions coming further, so if you're watching a replay of this, please feel more than free to still ask your questions in the comments. We will come back to the comments every now and again and just see if we have some questions to answer. Okay. Welcome everyone to our first Scuba Sunday of Australia. Okay, I will just continue here with my PowerPoint presentation. I'm gonna start off with Layla. Scuba World is our first one. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and maybe about the dive center. Yeah, okay, so um, first off, I'm Layla. Um, I've been an instructor for three years. Um, I learned to dive when I was 15 and just fell in love with it. Um, I've worked for a few dive centres just on the east coast of Queensland here, and I've now found myself home at Scuba World, which is where I've been born and raised on the Sunshine Coast as well. Um, Scuba World's a fantastic business. Um, it's a family-run business and still in the family. 1979 it was established, so over 40 years. Um, the McKinnons, so Ian McKinnon started it. Um, and Rob and Mike are their sons, and Mike now runs the business. So we have 12 highly experienced staff. Um, most of the staff members, instructors, or dive guides have been trained here at Scuba World, um, and we have full-time and casual members as well. Um, so Scuba World, um, right here, we have a dive shop in Mooloolaba, um, purpose built for diving, which makes it even better. So um, downstairs we have a massive area for divers to set up all their gear and then upstairs we have a retail shop as well. So up in the retail shop we're Aqualung Partner Centre. So all Aqualung and Apex gear upstairs um, and everything from beginner to advanced divers. So really, really good. Uh, we have an on-site pool. Um, out there or in the classroom which I'm in at the moment um, so plenty of space for diving training shopping whatever you wish um, and right just down on the water so when the divers are ready we gear up and we head onto our boat and just cruise down the river out to our local dive site um, so it's pretty amazing it's a great experience and you can check out other people's experiences on TripAdvisor as well so you can see we have 900 plus excellent reviews. So yeah, it says something. But um, <laughs> we also have the largest active club um, of divers in Australia with over 170 members. It's called our Platinum Dive Club. And our divers are very enthusiastic. They're locals and they love exploring their backyards. And it will sh soon show why with some of our dive sites that we get to explore. So. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Especially having local divers right now is we've, we found this in so many oh, places, sure. people that have always concentrated on, on local diving have, have had a much better time through COVID obviously than, than in other cases. Um, tell us a little bit more about like your locations. We have a few slides here. So maybe you can tell us a little bit more about what special diving day we can go through the different through the different uh, destinations and dive sets that you have. For sure. So um, here at Scuba World, we dive every day um, apart from Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So if the weather's good, we're underwater um, and we have some great sites. By far the favourite is the XH Mayers Brisbane. It's an artificial shipwreck that was sunk here in 2005 and it's just insane. And recently, the fish and marine life on it is incredible. Uh, we're talking thousands of bait fish schooling around the wreck. You have to swim through the bait fish to even find a hole to go inside. And then down at the stern, there's usually schools of mulloway, 
Napa, um, yeah, mangrove jack and the occasional eagle ray that swims past as well. Um, the wreck is home to many, many other species, inc including gropers and turtles. Um, and the water temperature usually averages at about um, 24 now. Um, during summer, about 26. In winter, it gets down to a chilly 19 degrees for us. Um, we're very much in our seven mils and dry suits almost. So <laughs> um, visibility, like uh, what Bob said before, we don't count in hundreds of metres, um, but usually average around seven to 25. So the wreck, if you haven't dived it, it's fantastic. I'd highly suggest it. And it's up there on one of my favorite dive sites off here. So pretty special. Um, and the pictures look amazing. <laughs> oh, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So low vis on the wreck doesn't really matter because you can actually penetrate it. So you can go inside and low vis inside a wreck doesn't bother you. So yeah, it's good. Awesome. Let's move on a little bit more. Ooh, yeah, corals, so, nice. Our local reefs. Um, I used to work on the Southern Great Barrier Reef. So when I came back here, I was like, oh no, the corals are going to be a bit sad. But I was so surprised on how healthy they were. Um, we've got corals with vibrant pastel colours, soft and hard, and they're all healthy, which I was amazed by. Um, we have about 15 different local reef dive sites that we choose from regularly um, and they're all varying in depths and topographies and things like that. So some of our dive sites are suitable for our open water students and they uh, average at about 12 metres and then some of our other dive sites are exploring dive sites where they get down to about 20 and overhanging rocks and caves and holes. It's pretty groovy. Um, water temperature, obviously about the same. Um, it's all within the same vicinity of visibility as well. Wonderful. Ooh, turtles. <laughs> so um, the wreck and the reefs are most of our um, popular dives during the week. Um, but once every month, we head out to Flinders Reef, um, which is voted the best reef ecosystem in southeast Queensland. Flinders Reef is just an hour away or 75 minutes by boat and we usually do a three dive day so it's not that big long trip for only two dives. We do three dives and we change the dive sites each time. So um, the Flinders Reef has eight moorings on it um, so eight different sites that we choose from and you get to dive three of those on one trip which is pretty cool. Um, so Flinders Reef, heaps of turtles, beautiful, and the visibility can then extend and it ranges from 12 to 35 metres, which is quite nice. Yeah. I'm going to push in a question here. How about the marine life? What's like the most common marine life in your area? And what's like the, the stuff that you can encounter? Maybe some of the, the specials that you got there. The specials. So during winter on our local reefs, um, we get greeted by the greener sharks. So it's not yet a congregation area um, that's been labelled, but there is a particular dive site out here that they always come to during winter. Um, and then there's another dive site, which is about to talk about next, that has an even more, there you go, Cherub's Cave. Um, so Cherub's Cave, once again, is only a winter dive um, and it's easily you can see 30 plus sharks um, and the green nurse they're like dodo birds completely harmless big scary teeth pointing out but oh it's just amazing um, and then other marine life we have um, the schoolings of fish and things like that is quite special but um yeah a bit of everything you never know what you could find so that's awesome yeah um, so Cherub's Cave um, is for advanced divers only. Um, you do need to be deep and nitrox certified for this one um, because it does average at about that 30 metre mark. Um, but it's worth it for the sharks. So if you're not there yet, definitely get your nitrox and your deep ticket um, so you can come with us and explore this one too. So this is off Morton Bay as well as Flinders. So about 90 minutes by boat. Awesome. Really cool. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of sharks. I'm a, so that's obviously going to be my spot. I'm a, I'm a very enthusiastic shark diver, which is great yeah. for where I'm staying right now. But 
Ooh, yeah. that looks cold. <laughs> so the Barwon Banks, uh, it's something special. Um, the Barwon Banks is 80 minutes out, direct east off the coast. Um, and it's meant to be known for its big fish. Um, talking big fish, first time I dived there, uh, I had two manta rays, massive manta rays just cruising around with me. Got some amazing photos and I spent most of my dive there. Um, we can also get greener sharks, leopard sharks, gropers, and apparently there's been some other bigger sharks spotted out there as well. But I'm yet to see them for myself, but I'm looking forward to it because I'm a shark fan as well. Um, but the Farwin Banks, um, because it's the distance out and the depth, it's deco or XR divers only. So um, you do need to get your certifications up for this one. Once again, the visibility is fantastic, 15 to 35 metres, um, and the depth can get to 45 um, off some of the slopes. So, yeah. Nice. Okay. I'm going to ask you a little bit more. Um, you said you're in the sunshine area. What what sort of activities can you also do? I mean, because we're always talking about this is mainly also for tourists and for people yep. that maybe want to come traveling to Australia. So what are some off well on land activities that you can do in the area? Yeah, so um oh this Sunshine Coast has a bit of everything from for anyone. So if you like a bit of bushwalking, we've got the Glass House Mountains where there's plenty of different mountains to choose from and go explore. Or if you're into water sports, we've got all the um, canals where you can go paddle boarding or kayaking around the island or anything like that. And of course, um, local breweries, there's plenty of those. So, yeah. Especially yeah. for divers, we know, we know divers like to, like, <laughs> like to have, have a nice beer after. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, have a beer and sit by the beautiful beach. What more could you ask for? <laughs> awesome. Well, you definitely have me want to come. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds really nice. <laughs> yeah, something special. Okay, wonderful. I'm going to come back to my screen and I'm going to move on. I'm going to ask Bob some questions. Bob, how are you doing? Very good. Thank you, Karina. Very, very good. Awesome. Uh, Bob, tell us a little bit more about yourself and maybe a little bit more about ProDive. Yeah, certainly. ProDive, uh, we've been in, in business now since 1986. It's been, a, we also have family run business. It's family run now. Uh, seems to actually go well. That's a photograph of my young son there, my youngest son. Uh, he's one of our instructor trainers with us at the store as well. But it's a fantastic area on the Central Coast. Um, people are very community minded. People are very, um, I suppose, tourist-minded as well. They like to get out, and I think that's what's actually helped us to, to prosper because people want to get out. They want to do something. I mean, football on Saturday morning with the kids, netball on Sunday with the, with the daughters, and then diving in the afternoon. That's the way how it seems to run on the coast. Awesome. Netball is something I have never heard of before I came to South Africa. Now I, now I know it. It's not, it's not actually a thing in many countries. Did you know that, guys? <laughs> yes. Netball is the largest sport played in Australia. More people play netball than any other sport. Is it? Wow, that's, that's very interesting. See, I didn't know that. You learn something every day. Like I said, before yeah. I came to South Africa, it was not in my repertoire. I'm like, what do you mean netball? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that's, a, that's actually one of the places in Australia that I've been to myself, ProDive, Central Coast. <laughs> yes. So um, I'm going to come back. Tell us a little bit um, what's special about the location. I'm going to move into the first dive site. Tell us about your dive sites, but also your location a little bit more. Yes. Where we're located, um, we're halfway between Sydney and Newcastle. So as I said earlier, we've got the majority of the New South Wales population within 90 minutes of us. That's one of the reasons why they sank the HMAS uh, Adelaide in this particular area here. Um, we've got close access to nearly 4 million people in this state. And with the major freeway straight up and down, 90 minutes from a major airport, 90 minutes from a regional airport, which uh, really does help us. We get a lot of people that do come to Australia, they want to go around and do a couple of things each day. Um, and it's just a quick car ride. You can even come here by train. So, I mean, that's, a, that's the best thing. We've just celebrated the 10 years Adelaide sinking. It took quite a long time to get the Adelaide here, but um, once it was here, it really has gone on. And um, as you can see, it went from uh, something on the surface to now. It's just a fantastic dive site. 
there's well over 5,000 divers a year that uh, that go out and have a, have a dive in Adelaide. And they don't just do it once, they do it twice. And we have dives that come up every month uh, from uh, different destinations, Canberra, all the way down south, down at, um, go past Wollongong, all the way down south, Jarvis Bay, Ulladulla, Batemans Bay, and all the way north. So yeah, it really turned into a, a bonanza for the New South Wales coast. Awesome. This is actually bringing me to a personal question. Do are most of the wrecks you guys dive artificial? Because it seems like, I mean, everything I hear, like a lot of the, the photos I've seen and stuff, there's a lot of artificial wrecks, which is really cool, I think. It's not happening in a lot of other countries in that same way. No, this is the only artificial wreck that we have. Um, it was brought about because the majority of wrecks that we have on the coast are either very, very deep, they start at 42, 43, or they're very shallow and they're wreck sites. Just because you swim around and you can see a bit of rust doesn't make it a wreck. Okay, you've got to be able to see some. And this is one of the reasons why the Adelaide um, came here because it gave us a true, true wreck. It's the largest wreck off the East Coast. It's got seven decks. Just so much to see. It's fantastic. Oh, that's awesome. That's that's very nice. I want to just I want to just plug in a little bit here. We have a lot of people watching. I'm sorry, I'm looking down because I have the, the Facebook screen on my phone. Um, we have people from from Germany, Malaysia, Greece, Bali, Romania, Turkey. Wow. Uh, all over the world. We're seeing this. Okay. Tell us a little bit more about Is this the Adelaide? Yes, yeah, this is the Adelaide after it just first sunk. Um, when, you, when you think about the Adelaide or when you think about any warship, you think about fish, you think about rust, you think about all the other things. But when they first sink, they're very clean. As you can see, this is the first bit of algae that just started on the top part of the uh, wreck. In fact, the Adelaide shone in the water. It was amazing. You'd, uh, you didn't have to see. You could actually see the shine coming through the water because it sank in uh, very clear water on sand. And with that grey aluminium paint that was on it, it just stood out. It was, it was a great shot. After a couple of weeks, you can see by the next photo there, the, um, the coral started to grow. And in fact, it went from being something that was going to take us three months, maybe six months to get fish life. Within the first two weeks, we were just crowded with little hingeback shrimp. Another two weeks, we had uh, fortescues on the deck. Because there was nothing actually attacking or eating those animals, they just became very large. And I mean, you could dive the first wreck. I dived the wreck in the first couple of weeks, and you would see hundreds of cuttlefish eggs, squid eggs, everywhere. It was absolutely amazing. Um, it just goes to show that you put something in the water, and very soon, marine life attaches itself to it. And we had all the people who were telling us, the scientists who were telling us what fish would arrive in this time. And, you know, within 12 months, we'd probably start to have the first colony. Um, it proved them all wrong because within three months, you wouldn't have recognised it as being a wreck. It was just fully covered. It was absolutely amazing. Wow. That is, that is amazing. That to me is one of those stories about like putting something in the ocean, how resilient the ocean is and how, how like it can restore itself if we just let it. Yes. Definitely amazing. This is the bridge. This is the bridge of the uh, HMA satellite where you can see all those uh, windows where you can actually swim through. Every section of the ship was laid out in such a point that it was a swim through. There was no section of the ship that you had to take your gear off and try and push it through holes or whichever the case may be. You can swim through the entire ship. Here we were doing a, um, I think we were doing a shoot for BBC. Um, where they wanted some information uh, to go through on the, how the Adelaide had sunk, what had actually come by, and where you look inside the bridge there, we left as much as it possibly could be left inside. Obviously, um, you couldn't leave any PCBs or mercury or anything like that. They're just going to cause any contaminants. So when you look at those cabinets, they look fantastic. There's nothing in them, but they're just empty cabinets. But it does give you the feel that when you're looking inside the ship, you can see it. And as being the bridge, this is probably the shallowest part of the uh, ship, it's one of the places where we can start people in penetration. You look just above the diver there, you can see there are holes. So you come straight in, three metres away, there's a hole. So the person you get straight out, you don't have that, that claustrophobic effect, which you do sometimes get in other, other wrecks or caves or something like that. So it really makes it worthwhile. It's a, it's a ship that uh, you have to be an advanced diver to get down to because its first deck is at 25 metres. We had originally been planned to sink shallower, but this is just the way how, how things turn out. I think I, this picture to me is so cool. I feel it's like the perfect like photo booth where you can take such a cool photo underwater. Huh. I would I would like probably get a captain's hat to like put on two divers. 
Yeah, look, oh, it's, a, some... it's a great ship. You, you'll love it all. Beautiful. Ooh, sorry, that was one too much. Sorry. Some of the different animals that we have in the area. Um, this is a shot of Terrigal Haven. Terrigal Haven is one of those places. Everywhere has one. Sydney has Shelley Beach. Um, you've got the Tweed. You've got different places like that. We all have these areas where we can get people into the water. We can take them in for, for tri dives. We can get them in doing their open water course. We can get them in doing different specialties. But this is a shot where you can see just looking straight down on top where those boats are. The water's only four, five, six metres deep. When it comes past those, uh, those exposed rocks, you now move out into eight, nine, 10, 15 metres. It goes right around. It's a perfect place for training. It's a perfect place for people to get out there and use their, their cameras. We have um, giant stingrays in there. The stingrays will be two, two and a half metres across. We've got a couple of grey nose shark that comes through there. You may see a little dusky whaler every now and again. In the sand, you'll have stingrays, you'll have goatfish. You'll have schools of yellowtail. They're little horse mackerel. And you'll just see hundreds and thousands of those just from around the diver. It's a great place to actually take in a couple of slices of uh, stale bread wave your hand around in the water and you'll just keep completely covered in fish. It's, uh, it's really good. We do also have the Eastern Blue Rats, what we call the Blue Groper. They're the New South Wales um, state emblem fish. And they will come up to you and they'll just sit right beside you. They'll tempt you. They want to be fed. They want to be touched. We tell the divers not to actually feed them, not to touch them, just to look at them and to see them around there. And you'll see one, two, three. Sometimes you might only have one. Other times you'll have three or even four of them swimming around. So, it's an excellent dive site. Um, just in that one area there, there are four different sites that you can dive and see something totally different. One of the areas has got a very large anchor. The anchor stands about four metres tall off the, uh, off the falling rock face. And uh, it serves as one of our turnaround points for our divers. And it yeah, really makes it worthwhile. That's awesome. That little site. These, are, these are probably some of the pictures from there, right? Yes, yes. Here we have the zebra palmer or the giant cuttlefish. They go through their breeding cycle. We will have quite a few of these um, come into the area. Little nudie banks, all right, they'll come through and uh, we'll see quite a lot of them. You'll also see the little fiddle rays or banjo rays, banjo sharks, whichever you like to call them, swimming over the sand. It's a fantastic day dive, but it's an even better night dive. Uh, you'll see the octopus, the little pajama squid coming up out of the sand. Um, the fish become a little bit dazzled. Of course, you've got the, the dive with lights out there. It's just superb. Parking's easy. Parking, I think the furthest you've got to walk to get to the water here is 10 metres. Uh, we, we complain if we've got to park any further than that away from the water's edge. Um, you know, quite a lot of people don't, don't understand the fact that we don't have to walk a couple of hundred metres when we can park right on the edge of the water, you know, a couple of steps where we're underwater. It's great. That sounds awesome. And night diving, I, I can imagine that, especially cuttle, cuttlefish and and octopuses and stuff like that at night. They just, it's a whole different ball game. The colors that come up, it's, it's amazing. Yes. This is another shore dive site that we had just up near Blue Bay, Tawoon Bay. Um, we regularly take out shore dives. We don't need to worry too much about um, running our boat. We keep our boat mainly for doing some of the more offshore dive sites. But we have twilight dives where we do a dive at four o'clock in the afternoon. And then front back up again for another dive at five, six o'clock becomes a night dive. Uh, each weekend, when I say each weekend, I shouldn't say each weekend, virtually every day, there's someone in the water. Even today being Mother's Day, there were people ringing us up wanting to go for a dive today. Um, but no, it's, it's great. Lots of, uh, lots of areas there. If you just look towards the back of that picture, you will see there's a little bit of white water. Three miles offshore, the water is only, that's it, yeah, three miles offshore, the water's only six metres deep. So we've got a fantastic big reef out there that sitting in a boat, I can just look down on the divers. You know, I say to the divers, no, you were touching the bottom there or you're feeding out. Oh, no, I wasn't bobbing. I'd say, yes, you were. I could see you. <laughs> I think you don't get that in too many places. But yeah, it really is a, a fantastic area. That looks, it looks amazing. So, so this is a protected, like a bay or something where yes. you, you can get in the water very, very easily. Because that's yes. something... Here, I mean, I've been diving on, along the coast here. Obviously, if there's protected areas, it's nice. But there's some dive sites where you have a lot of swell to get through before you can go diving. <laughs> yes, if you have a look there, that's a photograph taken from where the cars are parked. Mm. So they've got a long walk there, at least probably 15 metres. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, see you. And we have visitors. 
these are some of the visitors we have come along the coast there. Um, during this time of year, we had the seals and the sea lion, New Zealand uh, fur seals that will come up. They like going to the Adelaide because the Adelaide is an artificial reef, has brought in a lot of juvenile fish because it's a, a small reef. It's brought in a lot of fish and we get a lot of um, small trevally, small brim. And this particular seal likes to go out, chomp on the fish, set them all up in a dinner table. One of the special marks that we have, a very large mark that signifies where the Adelaide is, it's got a flat section. And this first seal goes down, catches the fish, lines them all up on the special mark. Then when he's got his, or he or she has got their fill, they then go back and then uh, start to eat them. So it works in quite good. We have quite a few eels in the area. There's the big mores that will come around. Um, they also like to be, be fed. We try not to do too much to them because uh, they are fairly big and you want to leave them alone. But it's a great dive side around there. Yeah, it's the one thing you should never really point at a moray, should you? <laughs> not with half a finger, no. <laughs> and this is one of the animals that people come up to see as well, little weedy sea dragon. Um, we've probably seen, this is about the furthest north they come. I know that some people have seen them up around Broughton Island, a place like that. But normally this is about as far as they come up. They're fantastic uh, little animals. These grow to about 30, 35, maybe up to 40 centimetres. Uh, the males carry the egg on their, uh, on their tail there. But they're just absolutely superb. They just swim so slow, so majestic. When you're looking at them, you think they're a piece of a colonia, a piece of seaweed. And mm. all of a sudden the seaweed turns around and looks at you. All right. And so it's a, it's a great little fish. It's, uh, you don't see too many of them. They are fairly scarce. But when you look at their colours, the photo just truly doesn't, uh, doesn't give out their colours. Even though that photo is amazing. Mm. And there's our eastern blue wrasse, or the blue groper. They start out life as females. When they, uh, when they mature, become dominant, then they turn around and become the males. Uh, but you'll see these fish swimming around all the time. They'll come up to you and they'll look at you. They'll stare you in the face. Um, they've got those pumpy dog eyes, I suppose, your males will say. Uh, come through um, and then really, really friendly type of fish. Actually, uh, I suppose when people go scuba diving, they want to have fish swim up into their face. They want to have fish that will come along, that they can see, that they can touch. These are the sort of fish that we have in the brochures. All right? They're the <laughs> ones that people want to see. And uh, yeah, it's, it's great. They're a, they're a cold water fish. We generally get them around this area here. And these animals can grow up to you know better part of a metre. So you get some fairly big ones. This one here is not very big. It's only about 600 uh, mil. But still a, still a large fish, just the same. Definitely. Tell us a bit more about your, your marine life, well, your mission deep or your blue ocean uh, things that you do and how you protect sea yeah. turtles and sea snakes. Ooh. It started out with one of the local divers going out and, and seeing a, a turtle. The turtle had moss or algae or ground all over it. And uh, the local seabird rescue came and saw us and said, look, that animal needs to be looked after. It needs to be cared for. So we went out and we captured it. Uh, we brought it in, the local seabird rescue. They rehabilitate them. They, they do quite a lot of work. Um, and we get probably, I'm going to say, quite about half a dozen to, to a dozen um, turtles at a particular time. It's not much just bringing in too many because they're not going to be able to do too much for them. We also have small little um, turtles that do come around. We have a have an area where they hatch here on the coast, the large turtles come and lay their eggs. They do hatch, so it's, it's interesting to see them swimming around. When we do get the big storm, such as we're having uh, at the moment, we get an east coast low, a lot of these fish are brought in out of the Australian east coast current and they're brought onto shore. You'll see down there, there's a little yellow-bellied sea snake. Um, we try and get these animals, bring them in. You've got to look after them, but they're highly venomous. So you don't want people swimming in them or people touch them or anything like that. So we, we generally turn around and say that they do go and call these the seabird and the reptile handlers to come in and capture these animals. They take them away, rehabilitate them. And once I've rehabilitated them, we don't keep them as pets. They actually go back into the animal in the wild. And uh, we take them generally about three, four miles offshore and then release them. On the day of releasing the sea snakes there, there was uh, four that were released. And that very afternoon, we caught another two. All right, then that um, obviously were a little bit, a little bit malnourished, a little bit cold, uh, looked after them released them back into the water so it works in quite well it's um it's very very good we don't mind looking after i mean look they're the things that we want to go on and see but we don't necessarily want to have them harmed 100 i mean you have to protect what you want to see so tell us a little bit more about the 
on land activities around the area. Yes. Some people want to come visit there, maybe come for a trip. What else right. can they do? One of the things that we offer is not only just come diving on the Adelaide, we've got 500 different operators that are offering just so many different types of uh, adventures. There's two adventures you can't do on the Central Coast. One is snow skiing, the other is whitewater rafting. Although when we had the big floods, you could have quite easily done the whitewater rafting. We have some of the different areas. I mean, we have, um, we have deep sea fishing, we have whale watching tours, we have dolphin watching tours. We've got one of the largest horse riding facilities in Australia, which you've got to drive past to get to the central coast, where they've got a magnificent you know, 200 acres where you just hop on a horse and you can ride it around. Not only ride a horse, you can jump onto a quad bike, you can go canoeing, you go camping. They've even got um, American Indian teepee style tents where you can go out and rough it. We call it glamping. Okay, it's, it's not just a Hessian bag strung over a fence or anything like that. It really is a fantastic way of enjoying yourself. And there's just so many different things that we do. Tourism on the Central Coast employs around 11,000, it's about 11,000 uh, people employed by tourism on the Central Coast. So it is a fairly big money earner. Um, the VET is something pretty close to about a billion dollars. So it's very worthwhile having tourism. And we work in well with that tourism organisation. And we try and package deals where we'll have uh, whale watching tours, diving, and maybe horse riding right? all in a, all in a mm. weekend. So the divers can go diving. The non-divers can go whale watching, snorkeling, horse riding. They can go to cheese factories. There's so much here to see. It. It's absolutely amazing. That's awesome. And it's so important to also have some dry land activities. First of all, uh, if you're flying, you have to have at least one day where you don't dive. And also if you come with a, with a family or if there's, God forbid, some bad, bad weather where you can't go diving for a day, yeah. then having something else to do is so important. You don't want to just hang around a hotel room while you're on holiday. It definitely is. Oh, yeah, we have some more pictures. And there you can see, everybody comes to Australia wants to cuddle a koala. Everybody. So there it is. We've got the Australian Reptile Park. Again, that's an area we've got to go, go past. We have different lighthouses. There's that Glenworth Valley Outdoor Adventure I was, I was talking about. We've also got a walkabout park where you can walk around. You can see koalas. You can see kangaroos. There's quite a lot of different animals. We've got the Australian native dog, the dingo where you can uh, go up and see them. We've got Treetop World. Treetop World is, uh, you've got zip lines, you've got nets, you've got ball. Great place to take the kids. And you can also get out, and just because we have tourism operators, we also have many fine eating houses. I mean, you can even do the Sydney Oyster Tour, where you can come up there. We have the, um, the very specific Sydney Rock Oyster. It's different from the Pacific Oyster. The Sydney Rock Oyster is an oyster of its own uh, type, and it's valued all around the world. People fly these oysters all around the world. All right, so we've got them right here, and you know, you sit out there. Not too many people sit out on on a, a linen tablecloth <laughs> wearing waders eating oysters. But hey, look, one of the things you can do. <laughs> Beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah, and this is where I was going about. See, there's that Broken Bay Pearl Farm, um, Little Crees. Uh, factory. One of the things that we is being embraced in Australia now is our Aboriginal culture. And we have quite a lot of, of um, Aboriginal cultural highlights that are going on in the area um, where you'll have bushcraft food, you'll have tours. Uh, it's one of the oldest civilizations, it goes back 60,000 years. And um, we have a lot of people that really get in. And as a nation, we're starting to learn more about the Indigenous. Um, custodians of the land and it's really working in great i mean i'm really embracing it i think i'm, I'm going to be go out and limb here and say majority of australians are embracing our, our, our indigenous culture and they're letting us know exactly what's going on so it really is working working to our advantage and uh, yeah I'm, I'm quite pleased and quite proud to be a part of that that's cool that's very nice that's awesome okay um i have a last question what water temperatures are we talking about so that's always yeah, my one question for everyone. <laughs> okay. During wintertime, our water temperature, the coldest gets about 15 degrees. We might get down to 14 and 12, but generally it comes back up. It stays around the 16, 17 degrees during wintertime. That's generally from um, June until maybe August. Then it gets back up around the 18 degrees during summertime between December right through to probably even now. The water temperature is still 23, 24 degrees. If we have that big east coast current that comes in, we can get summertime temperatures off the coast here. It's 27 degrees. 
folk on work in uh, well to our advantage. One of the things we do have is our water is generally about one or two degrees warmer than what is in Sydney or Newcastle because we don't have any major rivers here to push that water out. And the East Coast current generally comes in a lot closer. That's why we get the abundance of fish life. We also get the, uh, the warmer water that comes through. And because the fishermen up here or the fishing people up here don't use uh, nets, they use traps. That's one of the reasons why we also get a lot of, uh, lot of fish in the area too. So it's a, it's a, a fisher person, shall we say, uh, dream to actually come fishing on the Central Coast because they do catch a lot of fish. And it's not uncommon to see marlin during the summertime, marlin and sailfish, which is great. That is awesome. That is really cool. You have a pool. I know because I've been in that pool. <laughs> yes. This is my uh, this is my middle granddaughter. She comes down and uh, watches all the divers. She can't wait to get in there. She's six years old now, so she's only got a few more years to go. But she really loves it. And this was the smallest uh, T-shirt we could find for her. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's super. That, that's great. Yeah, you have also same as. As what Leila said, all the amenities there and diving looks amazing. Yeah. I actually didn't, I didn't end up going diving. We did a mermaid course while I was there, but um, it. looks amazing, definitely. Okay, I'm gonna move on to Claudia. You, Let's go. Thanks so much, Bob. That was thank you, Karina. Very nice. Let's go to Byron Bay. Yes, hello. Hello, Claudia. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit more about yourself and maybe the dive center. Yeah, sure. So um, my name is Claudia, or Claudia, as I'm growing up to say. Uh, here in Australia, we say Claudia, though, sort of adapted. Um, I'm originally I would also say Claudia. <laughs> you said, like, yeah, well, German, you would pronounce the same way. Um, so I'm growing up in Sweden originally, and I came, came to Australia as a backpacker um, a bit over two years ago now. And um, I've always, always been in love with the ocean, um, snorkeling hours uh, a day each summer in my parents' sort of, you know, my grandparents' house in the Mediterranean um, ocean. It's just always been, did my first trial dive when I was really young, always know, knew this is what I was going to do. So I came to Australia, then I went to Byron Bay and I did a dive master internship here at Byron Bay Dive Centre, um, like many people do here and uh, stayed on and did my instructor course here as well. And I've been an instructor almost coming up a year now. Um, Byron Bay Dive Center as itself has been here since 1965. So it's definitely a very established dive center. Um, and um, most of our staff came from doing a dive master internship here. So most of us have learned sort of the basics and really working our way up and we run both uh, dive master internships three times a year this time we actually run an instructor internship so people coming in already being dive masters and trained to become instructors um so it's really cool and it's really interesting um to watch people grow and uh train train obviously do their dive guide and you're really getting comfortable with that and uh, yeah so it's really interesting um, that is very true. I, I agree with that. I think one of the coolest things about working in a dive center is, especially when you have a dive center that does a lot of pro training, to see mm -hmm. people coming from a non-diver or from like a beginner, yeah. moving their way up to becoming instructors. That's, that's, a, that's a very special thing to watch. Yes, 100%. It's so special to find people, hear people find, you know, their, their voices, their customer, <laughs> instructor yeah. voices. And um, watching them grow, even in you know gearing up procedures when they come here fresh, and they're like, oh, where's where's this, where's that, um, and just finding you know what fits people, how to quickly fit people out. It's it's just it's really cool. It's really interesting. Um, here at Byron Bay Dive Center, we run um, a lot of different courses. We do a lot of introductory courses on the basic diver, um, open water. We do free diving, advanced, um, obviously rescue and dive master instructor. So it's definitely quite a training focused dive center as well as we used to have all the backpackers coming through. We've got a lot of locals that are engaged as well. We've got a nice pool area here. Um, so we do all of our training on site. And um, I would say when you come to Byron, most people who either the locals or the people who, got, who came here came for the ocean for one reason or another. So they might have come for diving or for snorkeling or a surfing is obviously very big here in Byron Bay, as you can see. Or the Hemsworth little... Brothers. <laughs> yeah, the Hemsworth, <laughs> Dakia Front, you know. 
there's many reasons to come <laughs> and um, people like kayaking it's just very ocean based as a community um and uh, obviously diving and snorkeling and also whale watching winter season is a big part of it that's awesome tell us tell us a little bit more about what's special about the area marine life but also just why diving is so amazing there what I, yeah, so we mainly go diving up by Julie Rocks. We've got this one wreck that's just offshore off of the main beach as well. That we do a bit of training dives and night dives. That's not our main sort of dive site. Our main dive site is Julian Rocks. So Julian Rocks is located only uh, three kilometers offshore. So it's five, 10 minute boat drives. So it's super easy to get out there. And it's a very, very special place. I don't know if you have the slide with the overview of Julian Rocks. I'm not sure if you have it. But it, it is. Might, it, um, it might come up in a in a, a yeah, few slides well, down. Yeah. So what's yeah. so interesting with Julian is that where we're located, you get the East Australian current coming down from the north with the warm tropical water. You know the EAC dude. If you guys remember Finding Nemo. <laughs> from Finding Nemo, yeah, I know exactly which one you mean. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and we we'll have a, a current coming up from the south as well with sort of temperate colder water, that nutrient rich water, which means they've got this very, very unique area where we've got the zone where the waters meet. And meaning that in summer we get these beautiful, as you can see now on the screen, the beautiful leopard sharks and manta rays. All the tropical fish you can see up in the Great Barrier. If you see a lot of them a little bit smaller here, um, we get all those. And then as well in the winter time when the temperature drops, you get these Great nurse sharks are a great center, so the congregation center here. How about you know, rocks of great nurse sharks? And it's not uncommon that you go for a dive and you see at least 30 great nurses, and you just sit there and they just go around you and they're just moving around and just watching you. And um, so it's a beautiful, it's a very, very rich marine life here. Got over 400 uh, types of marine species here. Um, so you can see now on the screen, we've got the leopard sharks, and so these beautiful ocean puppies almost they're very inquisitive very curious likes coming up and sort of having a look at you uh, maybe even sometimes follow you around the dive almost like a little buddy is how i imagine it um never in a threatening way just very curious and they really look you in the eye and yeah um make their presence so they're sort of our summer sharks i would like to call them we always say the will be gone this winter time is all year round but they're sort of our our summer buddies. Um, right now where we are in time is this beautiful intersection between summer and winter time, which means they've got both the leopard sharks and the gray nurses. This is definitely an, an ideal time and the water temperatures are nice and warm. I would say in, in summertime, the water temperatures um, are 23 to 25 degrees perhaps. It's nice and warm. And then in winter time, it goes down to 18, 19 is the coldest it gets. Um, okay, so that's definitely that's still acceptable. <laughs> yeah, it's still acceptable. Yeah, <laughs> you don't need a dry suit. Some people do come with dry suits, but most people just sit fine with semi dry, a five mil with a thicker layer underneath. Um, but Julian Rocks in itself, to give you a little bit of background about Julian Rocks as they are, um, but I have a picture I'll show you later if you can't see it. Um, it's a very special place. It's actually called. Um, it's, I don't want to butcher the pronunciation, but it's Nisanguli, is how I believe it's pronounced. And it's a very special place for the Bundjalung people, the Bundjalung countries, so or the people of Byron Bay or the Oracle people, and other Bundjalung people as well. And it's a very special sort of um, site associated with dreaming. And um, Nisanguli is the father of the world. So there's a lot of sort of cultural heritage there as well. Um, it's Julian Rocks is a sanctuary zone within the Cape Byron Marine Park, which means that it's in pristine conditions and it's kept, um, it's you know illegal to touch, collect, or harass anything or fish. And you only more up on these public marine lines that we have, which means that the marine life they get that you know is present there is very well preserved, and we've got a beautiful reef. Um, it's a beautiful dive site. Awesome. So. Um, as you can see now, I've got some turtles. We've got actually three types of turtles. We've got the green sea turtle, we've got the hawksbill and the loggerhead. I've actually got one massive loggerhead called Snappy. It looks very intimidating and he snapped his mouth. It is open the way it's called Snappy. Um, <laughs> but that's definitely something that people come to Dueling Rocks to see. And we run our snorkel tours as well, calling them the snorkel um, turtle tours because people come out and see the turtles it's very unusual not to see a turtle on a dive or a snorkel here love turtles i mean you gotta love turtles <laughs> you 
tend not to. <laughs> uh, we also have a manta rays, like I mentioned before, in summertime. And they're they're funny. Some of them are very wants to come up and play, like I'm sure most divers who have gone down with manta rays has had that interaction where you sort of underneath them and there's a sort of like thing above you, you're almost playing around with them. Um, and sometimes I feel like they're sneaky and they just almost just flutter past you and you're like, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> and they're obviously massive. Um, so that was another beautiful thing that we get due to the, those tropical warm waters that we get. Um, filled with rays as well. And these, as we can see here, we got the white spotted eagle ray, we've got bull rays, uh, blue spotted sting rays. We've got quite a few different rays and they're also all year round creatures for us. Um, especially the eagle rays I find very elegant and I find them very interesting. Um, I don't know, do you have, do you, have, do you get eagle rays in South Africa? Uh, yes, sure. and especially if you go up the coast a little bit more. I've recently been to mm. Mauritius. In Mauritius, they, there's a lot of eagle rays. Oh. They, to me, they're one of my absolute favorites. They're just so Same. elegant. They look like Same. whatever they are in like the elegant evening dress, dancing along. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> <laughs> like this, wow. They're beautiful. One of the instructors has a beautiful eagle ray tattooed on his shoulder, actually. Um, beautiful. Yeah, uh, they're, so, they're so graceful and beautiful. Um, mm. Rays in general, but eagle rays have that little bit of extra, extra day. They really do. And especially the, the bull rays as well that we get are um, not as graceful, perhaps. They're really big. We've got a lot, a lot of bigger sized animals out here as well, which yeah. some people always attracted to. Of um, course. With, yeah, of course. It's, it's really cool. It's, really, it's quite breathtaking to be around big animals same with the gray nose sharks or the leopard sharks it's uh, you feel quite small um, yeah so, yeah so, so a lot of the fishes are like like the same ones you'd get up in the great barrier reef as well we've got an enemy fish we've got the blue tang we do which is so funny hearing you guys both and Leia talking as well because we get most of those fishes here as well even though you two are quite far apart we are sort of right in between you so that's really interesting to hear we get the blue brokers, obviously. Um, we don't get seals. I wish we had seals. <laughs> but other than that, um, heaps of marine life. Awesome. Ooh, those look like great night dives. <laughs> yeah, they truly are. <laughs> so we get the cuttlefish, we get squid, we get octopus. Uh, very fun to play around with, which I'm so sure most of you have experienced as well. When you take a little rock and they just come and grab it back themselves, the octopus. Um, and they, it's very common to see them out there. So I just had to know how to stop them, obviously. You know, trained eye. Um, but there's there's always something to see out by Julian Rocks. I've, been, I've done, personally done over 230 dives, perhaps, just at Julian Rocks, and I'm, I'm still not bored. There's always, <laughs> always something to see you know visibility will range um the lower end will be maybe around seven that would go diving in and then the higher is 25 30 meters like it was today um and um it's definitely a good experience diving in sort of nutrient rich water as well you learn a lot like i said before um but i find that a lot of the animals actually come a bit closer because they can't spot you from as far away so i feel like you get a lot of closer interactions with animals and with the marine species, sorry, um, when their visibility is lower, actually. So it's not something, it's not necessarily bad. That's a very nice way to put it. I like that as a mm. sales point. Um, <laughs> mm. I will definitely remember that in future. <laughs> yeah, it is though, I've had a bull ray coming up close to me, which they would usually, I would see them, but they wouldn't come up close to me, but they'd come up this close to me simply because they didn't see me on time. And then we're just like, oh, I'll just swoop past here. Um, <laughs> it was really cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nudies. There's, I have to say, there's like, there's two, there's two main types of divers. There is the ones that mm. need to find all the nudies ever. Yes. And there's others. <laughs> and then there's the others. I, I count myself into the others. I like to see the nudie every now and again, but but I I don't have to travel the world to hunt nudies. And but I mean it's awesome. 
they definitely They're better awesome. than the the the, the on land brothers <laughs> mm, absolutely sales uh, we actually have this one diver coming coming back to us each year he couldn't come last year due to covid he lives in new zealand but he comes each year and he is his mission he comes for weeks and all he does is go diving and he's his mission is just document the nudie banks so he's got last time i checked with him he had at least over 150 different types just what he'd actually gotten photos of like different species of which is insane but there are so many i am definitely in the same group you are i see them i appreciate them super cute but my eye isn't as drawn to them as it is to other things happening yeah but i mean they are and these species seem especially cute to be honest this one is <laughs> I, I can't I can't name them. I, I I'm I'm not the person to name all the marine life, which I'm very glad there's a lot of people out there that can do that. <laughs> so I don't have to. <laughs> With the nudie banks, I'm not too uh, sure either, unfortunately. You know, I know a handful. Mm. Um, yeah, these are the green nose sharks, as both Bob and Leila talked about before. Um, these beautiful big sharks, like I mentioned, we are a congregation point for them, so we get heaps and heaps of them during the winter months um they might look a little bit scary when you first see them just because as you can see in these pictures they're sort of side-eyeing you um the reason for that is that they're just asleep during the day and their brain is sort of half shut off and they're sort of gliding around um their teeth also pointing out that's because they eat what's already dead mostly uh, is how i've understood it at least and that's why they, the teeth look a bit daunting um but they're, they're not harmful and it's a beautiful interaction you can have it's really really powerful if you're into sharks like you said Karina, it's it's really cool and you get so many of them around you swimming around and you can swim alongside them and yeah it's really powerful they're awesome they're very beautiful aren't they mm. oh there we go so there they have julian rocks as sort of a top view of it uh, so as you can see there are a couple of boats in the water so to look at you, that is the western side of Julian Rocks. So we mainly dive so the northern end, the western side, and the southern end. Uh, it, where we go diving depends on what the conditions are like of the day. So we'll get out there and the skipper will determine what's the best. So the, the Eastern Australian Currents actually comes and splits by in the middle of the rocks and tapers around the corners. So sometimes the current will get quite strong around the corners and sometimes we drift, drift dive then. Um, and we focus on the western side side so up, up north we've got this place called cod hole and cod hole essentially this hole is a swim through that we don't swim through due to um sort of preserving the marine life there as well and during winter time when the green is there you're not supposed to um so but with all these codfish sit and just around there it's, it's sort of on the deeper end so we stay 80 meters but there's definitely a possibility of going um deeper um and that's sort of the northern end that's more of our winter diving i have got the western side is a bit shallower a lot of time that's where we take our introductory divers or our water divers and we've got a beautiful reef only five meters deep is in the shallowest area most of it is around eight to twelve and then on the southern end instead we've got these trenches so we've got these beautiful stone trenches these rock walls that you can swim through you can swim through one and plop into the other one and it's just beautiful life the wobbegong sharks let me tell you in one of them uh, they're massive they're thick they, they're really long um which is I, I love sharks as you can hear i'm always focusing about them uh, <laughs> but it's always really cool to see and like i said that's also sort of on the deeper end but we when we take our tools, we go just 18 meters. Beautiful. Um, so tell me a little bit more about the things that you can do on land. I mean, you've yes. already scratched onto it a little bit, but but yeah, what activities yeah. do you have around there? Absolutely. So I, coming as a backpacker, I've traveled around most of Australia. I find that northern, like the northern rivers of the region we're in now is one of the most beautiful zones and regions in Australia, especially because you get both the beaches, you get sort of cliffs, you get bush and rainforest, you've got waterfalls, you've got hills, you've got mountains, small mountains, but still mountains. Um, and there's just a lot of different types of nature. So a lot of the activities here are connected to nature. So it's like hiking or um, we've got a beautiful lighthouse, we've got quite a beautiful um, 
famous lighthouse walk here at Byron Bay. Um, some people like to do skydiving or paragliding. Um, there's the food scene is quite quite interesting here. It's a bit of an epicenter, I would say, for sort of organic, locally sourced, a lot of vegan food here. Um, it's all obviously known as a little bit of a hippie town, um, but it's, it's really interesting. <laughs> Even I know that today. <laughs> yeah. I don't know a lot about Australia. <laughs> Yeah, well, to spin off of that as well, we have a lot of buskers as well. So there's a lot of music, live music going on in town constantly. And um, a lot of concerts, a lot, of, it's a lot happening always. So we've got a bit of a nightlife as well. So there's there's definitely a lot to do in Byron Bay and in the whole Northern Rivers area. It is just absolutely gorgeous. And even just taking a, a drive in the hinterland is beautiful. Awesome. Well. Thank you so much for that. And thanks for everyone. I think I think the thing you have to really do if you want to go to Australia is you have to plan a few weeks and go to different places. Such a big country. It has such big varieties. Um, that's that's what I take away from this. That's what, what I hear. Um, yeah, thank you so much for doing this, guys. Thank you for coming on and talking about your dive centers, talking about your destinations. It was really, really good to hear from you guys. Does anybody still have some last words for me? Bob, do you have some closing yeah, words for the really audience? Look. Yeah, look, I'm going to say I'm, I really enjoyed it. I hope everybody else really enjoyed it. In fact, I'm just sitting here now and I'm taking a few notes. I'm going to plan to do my road trip to go back out to Byron Bay and end up at Mugula Bay. <laughs> I I mean, I think, yeah, look, I think it's <laughs> great. I mean, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of Australians don't realise that we have some of the best diving in the world, some of the best local diving in the world. We don't have to go too far. And I mean, um, the unfortunate thing is here in Australia, we can drive for you know, a day or two and still be in the same state. <laughs> so, uh, so I suppose, uh, you know, driving up to Moolumbar, I think I'm really, really looking forward to that. And I'll, I'll definitely plan a, a drop in at Byron Bay. I'll see you shortly, Lovely. ladies. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you then. <laughs> and I'll be bringing people with me. Yeah, and I mean, let me know. I, I think it's super good that that uh, also doing this for the Australians out there, because I mean, now is the time to explore your own country. Uh, it's the best place. It's the best place to go. I mean, it's not like you can go anywhere else at the moment, really. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Leila, do you have something else to say to our audience here where we have some closing words or anything you still want to mention? We had lots of watches, by the way, from Portugal, Norway, Germany, Indonesia, Turkey, lots and lots more. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for watching. And I loved listening to everyone as well. I'm super excited. I've always wanted to dive with seals. So I'd have to make my way down there. And I haven't dived Julian also. Yeah. Uh, I'm so excited. And it looks like we're all visiting each other. So yeah, hopefully some others can join along as well. It'd be great. Um, but yeah, otherwise, words of wisdom. Happy diving. <laughs> Good. Good, happy diving. Uh, awesome. Yeah, thanks so much. If not anything else comes of this life thing, then at least you guys will, will come visit each other. <laughs> yeah. Claudia, do you have something yeah, else? That's great. Oh, just thank you so much for inviting us to this. This was great. I'm very excited to go diving. I'm actually planning on doing a road trip in June, uh, simply for diving. I've got a couple of weeks set up for that. Uh, so I'm very excited now. Um, no, but that was, this was beautiful. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for coming on and thanks for, for talking about your beautiful dive sites. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.